I'm Dr. Alex Lucas, and I'm a faculty in the Department of Health, Behavior, and Policy and VCU's Pauli Heart Center. Thank you very much for having me here today at the Healthy Living Series. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about including physical activity as part of your daily life. And hopefully uh, talk a little bit about some strategies uh, about, about how to do that. I'm just going to shift to my slides. Bear with me for a moment. And so as I mentioned today, I'm going to talk about activating your wellness plan. And I'm going to begin by talking about the blue zones. Some of you might have come across this term or be familiar with what blue zones are. But essentially, they're places in the world where a high proportion of people live to the age of 100. And also, a large number of the people in those communities are living without heart disease, without obesity, without cancer, or diabetes. And these original blue zones were places that uh, met these criteria. And that's Ikaria in Greece, Okinawa, Japan, Ogliastra in Sardinia, Loma Linda in California, here in the US, and then the Koya Peninsula in Costa Rica. So you might notice that some of those places uh, have similar characteristics uh, geographically, and that being that they're islands, but they also have some other things in common as well. One of those is that the folks in these places tend to eat a very well-balanced diet, and it's mostly plant-based, and most of the food is also low in saturated in fats. They're not, a, they're not um, meat-free environments, but they don't eat a lot of meat. It's generally a part of the diet, not a focus of the diet. These places, um, people also tend to be very physically active in their day-to-day -day lives. Um, and that's not just exercise that's, exercise, that's activity across the day. Folks also have a lot of meaningful social connections, strong social bonds in their communities, especially um, supporting people as they age. And so we can learn a lot about, um, you know, the things that help people live long lives in those environments. Um, I'm going to focus on the physical activity portion, as I mentioned. And, you know, first is to talk about why is physical activity important? Well, you've probably heard that physical activity is a cornerstone of cardiovascular health. But increasingly, we know that physical activity is critical to maintaining brain and cognitive health as we age as well. The brain is an organ that receives a blood supply. And so like the heart, the more blood, blood supply that's oxygenated we get to that organ, the better we tend to do. If we look at the bottom of this um, slide here, you'll see the graphic um, showing muscle function or musculoskeletal health. And it's normal as we age to lose what we call muscle mass. So muscles tend to get smaller and weaker. That's really important because um, as we lose muscle mass, we also lose the capacity to maintain metabolic health. And that means we, we become more susceptible to conditions like type 2 diabetes or metabolic health. So this is the pancreas that produces insulin on the right here. The muscles respond to the, the insulin that's produced by the pancreas and pull glucose out of the body or out of the bloodstream. Physical activity is also really important in terms of managing stress and for things like managing depression and mood. Um, a lot of these processes are um, focused around inflammation. So physical activity um, you know, decreases inflammatory processes in the body and sort of supports overall health. So now that we've sort of made the case that you know, places that, pe that have people that do a lot of activity have high uh, numbers of people who are healthy, we've spoken a little bit about what specifically um, physical activity can do for the body, but how much physical activity do we need? And you might have come across different prescriptions for physical activity, such as those put out by the American College of Sports Medicine or the American Cancer Society, which are that we want to get about 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity per week, including two days of resistance training. <coughs> Excuse me. And also, as well as doing structured supervised or structured physical activity, we want to also limit the amount of time that we spend um, in sedentary behaviors, such as sitting. And if I can just take your attention to the slide at, at the bottom here, you'll see on the left where the arrow is blue, we have what we call sedentary behavior, 
Um, the most extreme end is sleep, of course. And then on the other end of the spectrum, we have intense physical activity or intense exercise. So this would be running or swimming or biking. And whilst we 150 minutes of exercise, that's sort of more towards the red side of this arrow, we also want to limit the amount of time that we spend in sedentary, uh, inactive behaviors across here on the left as well. So both of them. And here's another example of how that might look when we examine a person's day-to-day -day activity. So this individual, as you could see, would wake up at 7 a.m. They then would go out for a 30-minute walk to you know, get those uh, exercise-related benefits or health benefits. That's purposeful activity. But if we look across the rest of this person's day, they are being sedentary. You know, and that includes tr uh, transport to work, sitting at a computer during the work day, transport from work, and then being inactive again in the evening. <clears throat> and that could be watching TV or more work again. What we're encouraging is that not only do you do the structured bout of activity um, for um, exercise in the morning, but that you also try and add in some activity across the day. And that could be, you know, walking during your lunch break, um, taking the stairs when you're in your building. If you're working at home, maybe taking a, a short loop around the neighborhood. As much as you can, trying to incorporate um, activity throughout the day. And so what are some practical sort of tools that we can use to do this, to increase our exercise, but also physical activity across the, the day and the week? The first thing we want to do is set some goals. And these ideally would be SMART goals, what we call SMART goals. And that means that they are specific, they're measurable, they're attainable or realistic, and they are time related. We want to plan activity. So a lot of us are really busy. You have you know, a day that fills up pretty quickly. You want to sort of set aside that time that you're going to take to do some activity, as in the example where the person was doing 30 minutes of activity first thing in the morning. But for you, that might work better if it's a lunchtime activity or in the evening after work. I want to identify the opportunities um, for you to be active. As I said, you might say, well, I'm going to do that exercise, but I'm also, you know what, I'm going to go for lunch to the park nearby my office and I'm going to walk there. Um, we also want to do what we call self-monitoring. And this is essentially just tracking how much activity you're doing. This could be through an app on your phone, or if you wear a, a Fitbit or a watch that uh, tracks steps, you know, this is one way of keeping, um, keeping tabs on what you're doing. And it also builds your awareness of what your patterns are like. You might be surprised to realize how much sitting you actually do in a day. And we also encourage being creative as much as possible. What are activities that you can engage in no matter where you are, no matter what clothing or equipment you might have access to? Um, you know, if you're at home and you have, you know, two levels to your house, it might be taking some of those stairs a couple of times a day. If your office is on a second or a higher floor, you might take the stairs as opposed to a lift. Um, you know, if you park um, close to your office, see what's the closest that you, you that you park now. Could you move that a little bit further away so you've got a little bit of walking between your car and your office or where you get off the bus or public transport to your office? Could you extend that just to give yourself a few more um, opportunities to be active during the day. And then the other thing to think about is um, identifying your most valued pursuits. This is not necessarily the active pursuits. This could be your social engagements, whatever you like to do for fun. How can you bring more activity to those, um, to those pursuits? And also how could being more active enhance your enjoyment of those activities? So here's a specific example. If we were going to plan to add some activity to our daily life, we would say, for example, I'm going to start riding my bike or walking uh, for 30 to 60 minutes a day for half an hour to an hour a day, at least three days of the week. And I'm going to do this for the next three months. Um, and I'm also going to try and make sure that as well as the exercise, I'm going to take the structured exercise, I'm going to take at least 7,500 steps a day. And so that's trying to get, get a handle on both the things at the right of that spectrum, the right of that red arrow, the high intensity exercise, 30 to 60 minutes, three days, but also limiting the amount of time spent sitting. So we're getting closer to the 7,500 steps across each day. And just to summarize, you know, we have 
uh, hopefully made the case to you that you know folks who include physical activity as a part of their daily life tend to be healthier. The folks that do a lot of activity have good cardiovascular health. They have less diabetes. They have better cognitive function. And it's not just exercise of a higher intensity that, that counts. It's also lower intensity activities that we would consider to be parts of daily living that are really important. In order to get more active, it's important to set realistic goals that can help us to um, achieve you know, the health benefits of being more active. It's helpful to plan these activities throughout our days and our week, especially if you're busy. You want to carve out the time to do this ahead of time. We also want to keep track of, of how well we're doing because this will also help us identify you know, where things have been uh, not so good and where we've got some opportunities to do better and to be creative. Think about different ways of adding activity into your day, non-traditional exercise. Don't think, oh, I can't get to a gym. I'm not going to be able to be active. There's lots of things that we find around us in our, in our environments that can allow us to build strength and become more active. And then finally, I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, give a plug for one of our own programs that's called The Ramble. And this is a walking for wellness program offered through uh, Massey Cancer Center's Integrative Health and it takes place two weekends of a month. One weekend, the first Saturday of the month is at Monroe Park uh, on the VCU Monroe Park campus. And the third Saturday of the month, it's held at the Stony Point Fashion Park. Just take a moment to say thank you very much for your time today. Really um, enjoyed speaking with you all. And if anyone um, has further questions, please reach out to uh, Integrative Health at Massey Cancer Center. And we would love to talk to you more about adding more physical activity or some of the other things that we mentioned in terms of a uh, healthful diet or, or um, lifestyle activities. Thank you very much.